Right now, questions on thin film. Right, interference thin film. Light from a sodium lamp with a wavelength of uh, 598.3 nanometer is shown normally on a soap film. If the film has an index of refraction n equal to 1.40 and is suspended in the air, determine the non zero minimum thickness for which it appears dark in reflected light. Okay. So, first of all, what is this? Is it double slit, thin film, single slit, or diffraction grating? Identify that one first. Okay. This one is about film. Because it's mentioned soap film. Uh, so it's about thin film. Okay. It's about uh, the soap itself is the thin film. Okay. Um, okay. Give you the wavelength here. Okay. Wavelength in nanometer. You must change. Uh, you see? Uh, shown normally. Uh, here you say normally, isn't it? Uh, I did tell you before. The light actually doesn't come uh, at an angle. It is actually the light comes normally. Uh, what I can say is the light actually comes uh, like that, uh, uh, perpendicular distance. Uh, I just use another color. Yeah, it comes like that. Uh, actually, it's normal. It's normal to the surface. Uh, yeah. So one of the light is reflected, another light go into the flame and then go back out again. Uh, so, but if I draw this way, shown normally, uh, you cannot differentiate the two waves. Yeah, because they are so close to each other. And you cannot know, uh, you cannot know how they how they uh, uh, shown yeah how they travel. Uh, so, but actual case, the actual case is like that. Uh, it travel normally. Uh, it's not travel it like this slanting angle. No, yeah, it's not like that. It's actually travel normally. And so we can say the path difference is uh, two times the thickness of the film. Two times the thickness of the film because it's shown normally. Uh, okay, that's the word normal. Okay, yeah, just rub this off. Okay. So now, the film has an index of reflection. Ah, this is important. So this is the reflective index for film. Ah, this is the reflective index for the film. Ah, we will use this. Okay. We will use the, this is the reflective index for film. Ah, suspended in the air. Ah, so air. Yeah? So in and out is air. Uh, we know that a uh, soap bubble, uh, this is actually like the soap bubble. Uh, we know that uh, we can say like, you can say it's just like a bubble. Yeah, it's just like a bubble. Okay, so uh, the bubble itself is flum. Uh, outside is air, inside also air. Uh, okay, so the three layer is, the three layer is air, flum, air. Uh, low reflective index. High refractive index, low refractive index. Uh, okay, that's the three layer: air, flame, air. Uh, so what which I shown here lah? Is it air, soap, flame, air? Uh, okay, so air has the low refractive index. Yeah, inside and outside. Yeah, inside and outside low refractive index. Only the flame has higher refractive index, one point four zero. Okay. So um, determine the non-zero. So you must know how to um, you must know how to draw the thin film uh, diagram. The thin film must have a uh, three layer. The middle one is the the middle layer is the thin film. Okay, the film is always at the middle layer. The film. Uh, sometimes we say it as a coat. Sometimes we say it as a coat. Sometimes we say as a film coat normally is below is a glass lens. Huh? Coat that uh, coat is like protecting some uh, a surface. Um, okay, coat or film is normally the middle layer. Middle layer It's not the lower layer. It's always the middle layer. The thin film is always the middle layer. Okay, so you must know how to draw something like this. Okay, uh, you must know uh, outside is uh, the first layer is air. Yeah, in the middle is the thin film, the soap film. And inside again is another layer of air. So and then uh, you must uh, write down the refractive index one, one point four zero and one. And then you must compare uh, the refractive index, which one is low, which one is high. Like this one is low, high, low lah, low, high, low. Uh, after you already uh, write down the refractive index, compare compare the refractive index low, high, low, uh, or low, high, highest. 
uh, then only you can determine the phase change and whether these two light uh, is in phase or anti phase. Uh, it ultimately we want to know this. Uh, this is the thing out we ultimately want to know. Uh, is it the two these two sources of light, uh, which is uh, the first and second ray? Uh, is these two light uh, in phase or anti phase? Uh, that's the ultimately we want to know. Are they first wave one and wave two? Are they anti phase with each other or in phase with each other? All because of the phase change. Uh, all because of what we 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 need to consider about the. Uh, here this is what we call the phase change. Uh, phase change or pi radian. Understand or not? Uh, the one I circle that is the phase change. So it's important for you to know. Uh, so, so you all start from uh, drawing the diagram. Uh, know each layer. Know the refracting index of each layer. And then compare low, high, low or low, high, highest. And then you uh, see the, lay, the ray. Uh, is it in phase or anti phase? Uh, I mean, first you see the phase change happen at what layer, uh, happen at which ray. Uh, so, and then ultimately we want to know whether these two rays are in phase or anti phase. Uh, like this case, uh, we can see uh, the wave one is uh, got phase change over this layer, isn't it? Because uh, you see the, the first ray, uh, it reflection from low to higher reflective index because we know the phase change only happen. Phase change only happen during reflection from lower to higher refractive index. Uh, from lower to higher refractive index. Uh, or only this case. Like this one, you see the first ray, uh, it goes from air to the flum. Isn't it? Go from air to the flum. Yeah. Reflection. Reflection. Uh, so got phase change like one time here. Okay. So the ray one got phase change. But the ray two uh, travel into the flum, no phase change. But the reflection here. Reflection here is from high to low, from high to low, no phase change. The reflection here, no phase change because it's from high to low, no phase change. And then go out, so no phase change. So for wave 2, all along, no phase change, so put as 0. The wave 1 has a one-time phase change, put pi. So pi minus 0, pi radian. Uh, so the difference between the wave 1 and wave 2 is a pi radian. That means these two waves are anti phase because one got phase change the wave one got phase change wave two no phase change so that means only one of them got phase change or pi radian means making them uh, anti phase uh, anti phase source understand so this is important the ultimately we want to know whether these two wave uh, is uh, in phase or anti phase okay uh, if like this one anti phase then we can know already uh, to form the bright fringe formula to form the bright fringe formula Alright, uh, to form the bright fringe formula uh, the, for anti phase. Remember the anti phase? Uh, this one. Ah, if anti phase, to form the bright fringe, the delta M is M plus half lambda. To form the dark fringe, the delta L is M lambda. Uh, that's for anti phase. Understand? For anti phase. Uh, then we look at this one. Yeah, we, do, we, we look at this one. Yeah. Uh, and this one, we don't look at the top one, understand? Uh, we look at the anti phase. To form the bright fringe is this formula m plus half lambda, dark fringe is m lambda. Ah, so we, we can write it down. So this two wave is anti phase, belong to the anti phase. So to form the bright fringe, the delta L need to be, um, the delta L need, because anti phase, uh, the, uh, so delta A, bright fringe, bright fringe is m plus half lambda. And then for dark fringe, for dark fringe, the delta L is M lambda. Ah, that's how we do it. That's why, uh, in the end, uh, because he say he want dark fringe. Uh, dark fringe. So the formula is, uh, you see, because he want dark fringe. You see that? Ah, so, yeah, he want dark fringe. So, uh, that's why the formula is using this one. Dark fringe, uh, which is using M lambda. Anti phase dark, anti -phase dark fringe is M lambda. So that's why the formula 2nt is equal to m lambda. See, it's equal to m lambda. Uh, so I don't remember. I don't. I don't go to memorize the formula. Uh, all I do is I uh, draw out the diagram, uh, figure out the refractive index of each one, and then see the phase change. Uh, which one got phase change? If only one, only one of the wave got phase change, 
means uh, they are they become anti phase. If both of them got phase change, both rays got phase change equal, then they become in phase. I become in phase. So from that anti phase and in phase, uh, I can determine if uh, anti phase use the below formula bright fringe dark fringe. If in phase, they use the above formula uh, bright fringe dark fringe. You understand or not? And after that, I know already. Uh, like this one is anti phase. Uh, I know the formula. Uh, bright fringe is using this one. Dark fringe uses this one. Uh, then from there, I can develop a formula for two anti. Uh, like this one, the question finally he he asks about dark. Yeah, asks about dark. So so from there, I can know uh, dark fringe for anti phase is using m lambda. So from there, I know it's two anti equal to n uh, m lambda, not the m plus half lambda. Okay. That's how we do the question for thin film. Understand or not? Okay, let's continue. Determine the non-zero minimum thickness. So that means he the thickness uh, of the film, the thickness of the film cannot be zero. Uh, the minimum thickness cannot be zero. Of course, if thickness equal to zero, means there's no no film already. No the the soap film is not existing. Uh, so the thickness cannot be zero. Cannot be zero. Uh, non-zero. Uh, so the thickness, the minimum thickness cannot be zero. If no, if no thickness at all, no film at all lah. No thickness at all means no film at all. Impossible. So the thickness must be non-zero. Okay, uh, but minimum. You want minimum, ah, huh? minimum. Uh, that means, uh, what what is it mean by this minimum? Uh, minimum means, uh, the the thickness I want to be minimum. Uh, the thickness I want to be minimum. And then the order must be minimum also lah. Understand or not? Uh, small thickness has the smallest order, but since the it is a non-zero, a uh, non-zero thickness, that means the order cannot be zero. Uh, that means the order for this for this case, for this case, uh, the order cannot be zero. Uh, the order can be equal to. Uh, the order and the order have to be mi minimum, but the order is not zero. The order is not zero. The order, although is minimum, is but it's not zero. If the order equal to zero, then the thickness also becomes zero already. You see or not? If let's say you substitute the order equal to zero, what do you get for the thickness? Zero. Ah, uh, cannot cannot be. So the order need to be one. The order is a uh, uh, full number. It's not the decimal number. Yeah. It's a full number, integer. Okay, so order is minimum is equal to one. Uh, but if you if let's say the question if let's say the question asks about bright fringe, if let's say the question asks about bright fringe, the bright fringe formula will be uh, m plus half lambda. You see m plus half lambda. Uh, so the formula will become two n t equal to uh, m plus half lambda. Ah, uh, so if you want if for this question if for this question if ask about if Ask about bright fringe. Uh, you want the minimum thickness, and and also the thickness cannot be zero, non zero. Uh, so the order, this one order, you can put zero, can, no problem because although, uh, so that means this minimum, this minimum order can become zero, can become zero because even though you put zero, you still have, you still have uh, half lambda, is it or not? Ah, uh, but if this one you put zero. If let's say this two and t, this one is order you put zero, this one becomes zero. The thickness becomes zero, uh, which cannot be. Yeah, which cannot be. Uh, so, so that means if you use this formula, only m lambda, the the minimum order can only be one. Yeah, can only be one. But for this one, this formula, if you use this formula for bright fringe, uh, you uh, this one order you can put zero. Uh, this one order can put zero because the thickness. Uh, will not be be equal to zero. It still has a uh, half lambda. Okay. Uh, that but that is our not our topic lah. This uh, if bright fringe lah. If we use bright fringe, okay. Just put that aside. That one is if uh, if we use bright fringe. Uh, uh, then we 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 uh, if we use bright fringe, then that's the formula lah. Yeah. If you use bright fringe, that's the formula. M plus half lambda for anti phase for anti phase. Okay. Now. Uh, so remember, uh, this one orders put one, uh, put one. Okay, so you see, determine the minimum thickness for it to be dark. You see that he says to be dark on the reflected light. 
uh, reflected light means these two rays lah. Uh, these two rays are reflected light. You see that? These two rays are reflected light. The light is reflected, but it's, it's, it appears dark. It appears dark to your eye. Yeah, you, you, you see the light is missing. Yeah, although the light is reflected, but it looks dark. Why is it dark? Because they cancel each other. They cancel each other. They destructive interference. Uh, so the light is being cancelled out. Uh, so that's why it forms dark fringe. Uh, it appears dark fringe. Uh, so this question is about dark fringe. So you need to use dark fringe formula for antiphase. Dark fringe formula for antiphase is using m lambda. Uh, so the formula, the path difference delta l, delta l is actually two mp because it's a uh, two times thickness going in and out. Uh, delta L is 2 NT so the dark fringe formula is M lambda that's why 2 NT equal to M lambda okay uh, M lambda and then the order you need to put equal to 1 not equal to 0 because the thickness cannot be 0 it's non-zero thickness okay so uh, now I already got the order equal to 1 because it's minimum uh, then wavelength I also have uh, I need to find the thickness the, the N you need to put the flame. Ah, remember, take the 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 thin flame of the the thin flame. Yeah, the refractive index for thin flame, not the other refractive index. Okay, so just substitute everything, and we got our answer. Okay, uh, what's the thickness of the? Uh, that means what's the thickness lah? That means what's the thickness of this? I want to get this thickness. Ah, uh, I want to get this thickness. All right. And this is the refractive index for this thickness of flame. Okay, so the order need to be put 1, uh, don't put 0, uh, although it's minimum, minimum at 1 uh, because zero thickness is non zero. So the uh, refractive index is, uh, no, the wavelength is uh, 598.3, uh, exponent negative 9. Ah, negative 9. So what is the thickness? What is the thickness? Come on, what's the answer? That's the minimum thickness. Okay, that's the minimum thickness because uh, my order is minimum. Okay, I have the minimum order uh, because my my order my order is minimum. Uh, minimum, yeah, which is one. Okay, which is one. Now, what is my thickness? I get so the answer for this one is two point one four. Uh, exponent uh, negative 7 yeah negative 7 meter negative 7 meter okay so that's it uh, all right okay so any questions uh, so if any questions you can write below at the comment there uh, that's it for this uh, this one so for thin flow, it's very easy. What you need to do is just uh, draw the diagram first. Yeah, draw the different the three the three different layer. Compare the refractive index. Is it low, high, low, or low, high, highest? And then see the phase change for each ray. Uh, it so determine whether in phase or anti phase. Uh, so uh, once you know the in phase or anti phase, you can find you can determine the formula, the correct formula for bright fringe or dark fringe. Uh, I can get the formula. Yeah, for bright fringe or dark fringe, uh, two NT is it? Yeah, uh, and then uh, about the order, uh, remember I got two kind of formula. If the formula with m lambda, the formula with m lambda, the mean the minimum order is the minimum order is one. If the formula is m plus half lambda, the minimum order is zero. Ah, uh, okay. This m uh, m minimum is one. This m minimum is zero. Uh, m lambda is m minimum 1 see that for m, m lambda the m minimum is 1 for m plus half lambda m minimum is 0 I already explained this in my lecture video before alright so hope you can refer back to my lecture video thank you let's look at next questions